My name is Laura Egan O'Brien. I'm the Marketing Manager for the College of Engineering and Architecture here in UCD, and I'm going to be your host for our webinar today. So this is the second um, webinar session we've had in our virtual talk graduate uh, webinar series. Um, today's uh, one that you're on is our electrical electronic engineering um, webinar, and we're going to focus in on the student experience and also the alumni journey today. So you're going to get a chance to hear from uh, Bailey, who is a current student from our one year program in electronic and computer engineering. Um, he's originally from China. And we'll also have Aoife Barnes, who is a graduate um, graduated in 2021 from our two-year program in electronic and computer engineering, and is currently a product development engineer in Intel. So she's just going to tell us a little bit about, a little bit about her journey um, to where she's working now. Um, so for those who are interested, the, the programs that we offer within our School of Electronic and Computer and or our Electrical Electronic Engineering are our couple of one-year programs and two-year programs in biomedical engineering, electronic and computer engineering, optical engineering, um, electrical power, um, and then most recently we've introduced a couple of professional diplomas as well. If you're wanting to get an overview of those particular programs and also a little bit about the school itself, um, earlier, um, kind of last month, we did a, a number of webinars as well, where the academic head of school gave um, this kind of information. So that uh, webinar was recorded and the recording is available um, along with this session on our YouTube channel early next week. Um, and I might get my colleague, Katie O'Neill, who's also joining us today, um, to pop a link in the chat to our YouTube channel so you can check it out there um, next week, as I said. Um, if you want to join in the uh, conversation with us and have any questions you want to ask either myself, um, our student or our alum, please do join in the conversation using the Q&A button, which is located in the control panel at the bottom of your screen. Type your questions in there as they come to you, and we'll get through as many as we can towards the end of the session today. Um, also, just to highlight that um, anyone who was um, given a link for today, anyone who joined us today would have received a link to um, join the webinar, but also a link to our event landing page as well. So make sure you check out that event landing page if you haven't already. So there's a lot of useful information there that you can, you can find as far as our program brochures, a link to the UCD virtual campus tour, um, some uh, alumni showcases, and also um, academic impact research case studies and things like that. So there's lots of information on the landing page um, as well, which you would have received um, as an email from myself yesterday or this morning. Um, so I think we'll get started. I won't, I won't talk on too much longer. Uh, so I'm going to introduce um, Bailey, who, as I said, is a current student, and he's going to talk a little bit about his experience so far. So Bailey, if you want to take over. Uh, okay, okay, thanks, Laura. And yeah, hi, folks. Uh, I'm talking about the thing is the uh, uh, what does the master degree bring us or the value bring us? You know, uh, speaking of the value of a master degree, uh, you must first ask yourself uh, why you are studying for a master degree. That is, uh, what is the purpose of your master degree? For me personally, uh, studying a master degree at UCD has brought me a five meanings. The first meaning is um, a better job prospects. You know, as a Chinese international student, the first thing I can appreciate is the benefits of a master degree for a career development prospects. First, uh, most immediate benefits, uh, I think your resume will have a higher academic background. When you're looking for a job, you have many more opportunities than someone with a bachelor degree. For example, um, you know, many Chinese international students are very interested in Huawei in Ireland. But if you look for job introductions provided uh, by Huawei on LinkedIn, you will find that 80% of the job requires a master degree or higher level degree person. Uh, and the second thing I want to talk about is improve your educational background. Uh, as we all know, UCD is the most popular university in Ireland for employers, and the vast majority of uh, people who study at UCD can find a dream job. And I believe that for many people, adding a very high-ranked university to their resume is a very good thing. Uh, for example, one of my classmates was these undergraduate studies in a very remote university in China, uh, if he only rely, relies on his undergraduate background, it is very unfavorable for his employment. However, he's now uh, graduating from just this master's degree uh, in electronic and computer engineering, and he is now receiving many more interview invitations from China than before. 
And the third thing I want to talk about is uh, engage in academic research, I mean, a PhD. I believe for some people who want to be a, a PhD, uh, having a master's degree is a must thing. But for this, I would like to talk about the significance for Chinese students. Um, you know, uh, uh, for, for most Chinese students uh, who are interested in becoming a, a PhD, applying for a master's degree in USD is a way to minimize the time cost. We all know that postgraduate education in China takes uh, three years, and PhD education in China takes much more time than foreign schools like QCD. When you complete a full-time PhD in China, uh, I think you, at, at least you are 30 years old. I give an example, a friend of mine uh, who is completing her master in food engineering in UCD has applied for UCD's PhD under the funding of CSC from China. And she's only 23 years old now, which means that uh, when she completes her PhD, she may just celebrate her 27th birthday. And the, the, the fourth thing is a uh, major change, I think. Uh, many of my friends say uh, applying for a master's degree as an opportunity to, to switch majors, especially for those who want to uh, pursue a major in computer science. You know, someone can apply for uh, UCD's conversion courses, uh, especially designed for people with non-computer backgrounds. Uh, of course, I believe that the time cost is also very low when you do this. And the last thing I want to talk about is about the uh, art values. Uh, because I, I have to say that uh, coming to Ireland to complete my master's was a definitely one of the best decisions I have ever made in my life. Because what I got is not just limited to my uh, you know, ex ex expertise. I mean, when you come to a place uh, with a completely different culture and background as an international student, you, you step out of your original world will and develop a more objective and critical, a critical way of thinking. Uh, you, you don't bluntly trust pandits or the media. You have a rational judgment on everything that happens. And I believe uh, the world becomes bigger in your eye. For example, when I was still in China, if my uh, classmates and I were talking about travel, we might only be talking about nearby city, but here we are talking about the beauty of the world. So uh, that's my experience. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. I think that's really interesting for our attendees to kind of hear your perspective and the kind of experience that you have. And particularly as an international student, um, I think that's beneficial for, for other international students who may be potentially looking at UC as an option. So really great, thank you so much for that. Um, our next speaker I'm going to introduce, as I mentioned at the start, Aoife Barnes, who did our two-year master's in electronic and computer engineering and is currently working for Intel um, now at the moment. So Aoife, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your kind of journey and your experience at the master's level as well. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Laura. Um, so hi, everyone. My name's Aoife. Um, I just graduated in 2021, so I would have been finishing up my master's around this time last year. Um, before that, I did a under an undergraduate degree, a bachelor's of engineering science in electronic engineering, also in UCD. Um, and I'm currently employed by Intel as a product development engineer. Unfortunately, not working in Intel, working from my bedroom, but still. Um, so a couple of things, I'm just gonna talk about the masters first, and then I'll talk a bit about my career journey, finding my first job, um, et cetera, afterwards. So firstly, what I'd say about the masters is, what I found the biggest difference between doing my bachelor's and doing my master's was my own per personal motivation. Um, I'll give you an example. So when I did my, when I left school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do yet. UCD was very good facility for me in the sense that first year was generic engineering. So I got to have a little taste of everything. Once I decided I wanted to do electronics, after three years, I felt like I wasn't finished. I hadn't specified um, my career path enough so I decided to take on the masters and one of the big pulls for me was the nine-month work placement that's mandatory in 
well, you can do a short one or a long one. I chose to do the long one in semester two of your first year of your master's. So I actually, so first year, first semester of the first year of the master's, it's very difficult. It's a tough course. The hours are very long in the sense that you will have lots of assignments and the assignments aren't necessarily big in terms of content or um, workload, but it takes a very long time for you to understand the concept. Now, what I found very good about the masters was I, I felt like I could approach the lectures more. The classes were smaller and the lecturers were more inclined to stay after class and help you out. There was tutorials, particularly when we moved to online, our lecturers would like hang around at the end of the Zoom calls for people to hang on and ask questions. Um, and I just felt like I was much more personally motivated because I'd really chosen to do a master's in something I was really interested in. Um, then it came to our work placement. So one thing that really impressed me about UCD in particular, we went looking for work placement. Um, I have friends in other colleges, other courses, who had to go looking for the employers for their work placement. UCD brought the employers to us. I was interviewed by multiple companies in the engineering building, like on site in UCD, um, which I just thought was really impressive considering we didn't have to travel for anyone. And I just, I just realized how in demand um, and how beneficial employers think we are to their companies, someone with a master's in electronic engineering. Um, I ended up getting employed by Intel for nine months in a section called Movidius, which is basically mainly to do with artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, kind of like chips that go into drones, uh, stuff like that. There was loads of us employed there and um, worked there on site for two and a half months. It was amazing. Um, Intel has a great campus, but then we went working from home. Now, another benefit of this industry is that we can mainly do all of our work from home. So none of the electronic engineering students got let go from their um, work placement because we were able to do them from home that was great so we got to fit you know we got to um, finish out our nine months um, so I then graduated in 2021 with a master's in electronic and computer engineering and a nine month professional work placement which I, I, I honestly think is invaluable and um, that's kind of my master's now I'll talk a little bit about my career journey so far so I started applying for jobs um, kind of September 2021, uh, September 2020, sorry, apologies. Um, while I was studying for my master's, I applied to a lot of the graduate programs um, in technology consulting uh, with kind of like the big four. I won't name names, but there you go. Um, and other big tech companies and um, specifically looking for kind of software engineering roles. Um, I found the software engineering world very difficult, but that's probably due to my own coding knowledge. However, the technology consulting companies were crying out for us. I got job offers from five different companies um, after the interviews um, with very competitive salaries. Um, they thought that the masters, you're basically a shoe in when you have a master's um, in electronic engineering. They understand the skills that you have learned throughout your two year course problem solving and um, being able to find a solution no matter what you've got good coding basics not necessarily not necessarily knowing one language or another but being able to adapt once you know one you know all of them and um, and then kind of basic circuitry as well so I accepted one of those job offers um, just before Christmas in 2020 and in the early 2021 Intel actually reached out to me on LinkedIn um, completely separate to my work placement that I'd done before. But obviously that aided a lot in the interview process. They offered me an extremely competitive salary and with lots of benefits due to the fact that I had a master's, the salary was higher and the benefits were better. Um, and I started there since September as a product development engineer. Um, I couldn't really say no. Um, so the master's stood out on my LinkedIn page. As I say now, most companies are looking for minimum bachelors. That unfortunately doesn't make you stand out anymore in today's world, but your master's is that little bit extra. Um, so I think having done that, I stand out to employers and hopefully more employers in the future. Um, right now, I'm really happy where I am, um, but I don't know where it's gonna take me next. I know I can explore many different areas within Intel and within the workplace in general, whether that be software engineering, semiconductor manufacturer um, and load consulting, loads and loads of different options for you that you're so competitive to those jobs because of your master's experience. So yeah, that's all from me. 
Great, thank you so much, Eva. I think that was really interesting. Um, I, clearly, you enjoyed your master's. Clearly, you find it uh, beneficial um, and uh, something that people should pursue um, to help their career uh, progression. Uh, so thank you for sharing your, your journey and your experience. Um, we might move on to our Q&A now. So I think some of our attendees joined us a bit late, so I'll just reiterate. If you do have questions and want to join in the conversation to either um, myself, our alum, or our student, um, just type your questions in using the Q&A button, which is located in the control panel at the bottom of your screen, and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, there is one open um, just now at the moment, so I think if it kind of leads on from what you were talking about in the work experience, so we might just go to that one first. This is yeah. someone who has a, um, I'm guessing has an offer, they said they're going to start with us um, in the ME in Biomedical Engineering in September, so congrats on, on your application. And um, they just had a few questions around specifically the work placement, I suppose they want to get themselves set up and ready to, to kind of hit the hit the ground running. Um, so they're wanting to know a little bit about, and, and Eva, you touched on this, about the two different types, whether it's a long or short internship, and maybe you can give us some insight into, are you guided in one or the other? I know it's a different program that you were doing, but um, whether, you know, you get help to decide if you want to do the long or the short um, and how that's kind of organized um, and then also can you do internships in you know outside Ireland which I know you did yours in Ireland so maybe I can answer that um, and then also um, uh, where do students do their internships what kind of companies that they do it in so you did it in Movidius but maybe where some of the other companies that your your fellow classmates were, were kind of doing it in as well yeah sure um, I don't know a lot about the short internship option. So I chose to do the long one, which is basically from January to August. Um, I think it has to be eight months, but I did nine. January to August of your first year of your master's. So you'll do a semester in college um, with lectures, assignments, exams, and then you won't go attend any college and you'll do a work placement from January to August and then restart your final year in the following September. Um, I just really liked that option. I thought you know, to be able to get credits for actual professional paid work placement um, was amazing because it's something that you can put on your CV as experience, you know, outside your college. So my work experience now says product development engineer Intel and Intel Movidia. So I have two jobs there already and I'm only in my first technical job out of college. And then I have my master's and my degree still in this, you know, separately on your CV. So I just think a nine month placement looks so, so good. Um, I think the short one is only three months during the summer. So you would attend college normally from the January to the May-ish. Um, you take less credits. So I think you take, uh, is it 30 credits? How many? Yeah, 30 credits. And then your your internship is worth 30 as well, instead of mine, which was worth the full 60. So you take six modules, or how many modules? I've forgotten how many credits there are after only a year. Yeah, but five, it, it the five short months? one is it's two to three months and it's during the summer period. And then for students yeah. who do that, they, they take um, an excess of option modules during their spring trimester. OK, yeah. So you'd be in college during your spring uh, trimester and then working during the summer. Um, and then in terms of where people did their internships, I hope that answered the question, by the way. Ask again if I, if you want more information, whoever asked that. Um, in terms of summer, in some terms of internships, I had friends who went to Galway. Cork, there was people in America. Now, mine got a little bit shook up from COVID, so I probably am the best person to talk about this. Um, and, and people relocated to those areas to get an experience of living away from home if they've always lived at home or something like that. So there are opportunities everywhere. And um, UCD have a certain number of employers that look for you for those internships. For example, Intel, Medtronic was one of them there in Galway. Um, and lots of different places come to Intel looking for you, but you're more than entitled to look for companies yourself. So you can go looking in Australia or America or wherever you want, as long as they're approved then through UCD. Sorry, did I say Intel? I meant UCD. That's what happens when <laughs> you're working at the same time. Um, so yeah, you can take them anywhere you want. And um, if you want to go try it somewhere else, they just have to be approved within UCD and you have to probably look for them yourself. Yeah, that's brilliant. I think that I think that pretty much answers the question, Eva. I just wanted to highlight that yes, we have two internship managers within the university and within our college who do a lot of the groundwork for you, making those connections with companies and putting together the job packages and things like that with the with the employers. And um, so we do normally they would look for companies within Ireland. But if you do have an interest in uh, this person was specifically their home country, um, yeah, you can put together um a, a proposal and um work with our internship managers to to um to to look at elsewhere. Um, so that, that's an option, but it, it's a little bit more 
uh, onus is on the student if you're looking outside Ireland, but it is an option and we have plenty of students who go um, internationally or go back to their home countries to do their internship placements. It's not a problem. Um, and then as far as, yeah, the companies are, are wide ranging um, and particularly for biomedical engineering, it would be a lot of medical technology companies would have a, a huge base in Ireland. So they would take a lot of our students on the placement specifically for biomedical engineering. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, Eva, for helping out with that particular question. Um, uh, Katie, I also know that sometimes we get some private messages. If there's any there that you wanted to ask some of our Yeah, staff. I've had a couple from Brett messaging. Uh, just one, I suppose, relating back to the internship. Someone says they have a four-year bachelor's degree from a different institute in electronic engineering, and there's no work experience, but they're trying to decide whether to do the ME or the MNJSC in electronic and computer engineering. I guess the big difference for them is either they're doing five years or six years. Do you have any recommendations for them? Uh, do you think it's worth taking the extra year on for that, um, for their work experience? Or do you think with a four-year bachelor's doing the one-year MNJSC is sufficient? I don't know if our students have any opinion on that. I know, Aoife, you've spoken highly about the value of the internship. Yeah. Um... I actually didn't even know you could do the um, NGSC. But what I would say about the two years is, so you're getting a two year master's with a nine month placement. And like I said before on your CV, having spoken to my now employer and manager who hired me, having master's professional paid work placement and your bachelor's, you, you have three things nearly for, you get two things nearly for the price of one, in my opinion. Um, because like I said, I'm in my first job now with two professional placements or two professional exposures to the work environment rather than trying to do a master's and then trying to kind of get into the work environment, even in interviews to be able to talk about your previous experience, working with different kinds of people, working with your managers. Personally, I would, I was always, I think at the end of the day, college gets you in the door, but your work experience and you know the, the work that you've done before is what actually gets you more successful in your job um, once you kind of get that first job you know that that's what employers are going to look for afterwards so even going into my first job I already had something on my CV yeah I just think the work placement is brilliant okay uh, good to know and someone just asking did you must have had quite a large class um in terms of I suppose peers and did everyone who wanted to get placed get placed did anyone was it a particularly difficult process or was there opportunities for those who wanted to engage? Um, so what happened with us was we we got, uh, we applied to the different jobs, got emails back saying interview at this time in this room in UCD. You kind of prioritise um, which jobs you want the most because the advice was take the first offer you're given just because the employers are very good for coming in and, and taking those jobs, uh, offering you those jobs. Um, and you should only apply to ones that you really want to get. Personally, I don't know of anyone who didn't get a placement. Um, there's obviously some difficulty if people don't want to apply for those those employers that are brought to you by the internship managers. Um, so that can just be a little bit more tricky. It just takes a little bit more time. Um, so, but as far as I know, everyone got a placement in, in a company that they wanted to be in. Um, so, yeah. Okay. That's good to know. I actually have a, a question for Bake Lee, if you don't mind. We have a student here who's coming to Ireland to study their masters in September for the first time. They've never been to Ireland. I'm just wondering if you have any tips for them. Yeah, and yeah, it is it's a very interesting question. Because if you come to Ireland, you'll find uh, you know, the weather is always change. And uh, I will advise you to take some, you know, the, the, the winter clothes to, <laughs> to, 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 uh, to, 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 to deal with the, the bad weather and the changeable weather. And, and another, and another tips is uh, when you get here, I, I would like you, I would like you to, you know, to join your class, to, to uh, finish your homework as soon as possible, not, 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 not to, uh, very late, uh, in, you know, so, so, you know, someone, someone finished their job very late and they just, just missed the deadline. Cause you know, especially in China, in China, very many universities don't have the deadline for their homework. So it's, um, 
is is a culture that you need to you know familiar with and and another tip is if if you want to find a job uh, or, or uh, internship i advise you um, you know early is better than the late yeah that's it thank you all right thank you so much katie was there any other private messages you got i think there's one other open question i can move on to if not not right now Sure, perfect. Um, so there was just one person in the chat was just asking, um, are there university or college jobs that might cover living expenses? So we're fully aware that um, uh, deciding to do a master's can be an expensive endeavor and students are looking at other options. So we always advise where possible that students put most of their, or the majority of their effort into their studies. So that's where they're coming and they don't want to, um, to be left struggling in that respect. But we are aware that some people will have to have part-time jobs. So if it's an international student, you are legally allowed to work during your studies. Um, I think it's 20 hours per week um, off term time and then it goes to 40 hours per week um, um, sorry 20 hours per week during term and 40 hours a week outside term um, now as far as on campus or university we do have a number of students who will go on to do kind of research teaching or research or teaching assistants um, so if that's something you're interested in when you get to us and come to us and you can speak to your program director and your module coordinators to see if that's something that you can pursue as well they are very limited they are in demand so it's not always it's not always an option um but it's something that you, you can look at um so we are fully aware that people um will have to pursue possibly jobs while they're their studies and we do have students who do that um so that's something that our attendees should know um i think there's one other open question here um something um asking about specific information around core electronic companies in ireland and opportunities elsewhere um Aoife, do you know of any other companies obviously um that students from uh, electronic and computer engineering would be going to or somewhere your classmates have went to um, and if there's if you think there's good opportunities within this space yeah so um obviously there's electronics companies and then there's kind of technology companies which we actually also fit into lots of people are able to get jobs there as well and um, intel is a big one um there's lots of us in intel there's lots of us in xilinx um they kind of do similar things but more F on the fpga side they are based in near dublin as well um there are so many more and uh, so so many more uh, and i think ireland is going to become a tech like work day they're looking for software engineers they announced like a thousand new jobs yesterday um intel are, are after investing like 30 billion dollars or something in europe so their europe is now becoming a center of chip manufacture whereas before it kind of would have been all kind of like Asian countries and um, we're trying to now become chip manufacturers ourselves. So companies are just going to follow from that. You know, that's one company saying we're putting money in here. So there's going to be jobs to follow from that. In my opinion, I think Europe is going to like explode as a semiconductor, semiconductor manufacturer in the next few years, even, you know, plans within Intel or Xilinx we're talking to other people um, who are in different jobs at the moment. Um, there's also lots of startups that people end up joining, whether on UCD campus, in the um what's the ucd campus called? nova ucd and there's lots of job opportunities there in startups um some of the electrical engineers are working in like bright wind or mainstream with um some of the wind farms in ireland so yeah there's so many different opportunities wherever you choose to go you know microsoft might take you google might take you any kind of software engineering takes you as well and then on top of that all the electronic companies too so i think there's loads of opportunities in Ireland and worldwide um, as an electronic engineer. I think that's a real comfort to any attendees joining us that it really seems to be an employee's market. There's plenty of opportunities out there. And um, to expand on that, Aoife, do you um, have any advice for, for people tuning in and maybe some of the skill sets that they, they would need um, to build up to, to be able to get into some of these companies? Yeah, um, so I, I did interviews for, for some of the big tech companies um, and I find their software interviews very challenging and I think they're probably a little bit more focused towards uh, computer scientists, which um, I would consider myself half a computer scientist, but not quite fully. Um, they're just very challenging in terms of the coding front. And it's, it's more a case that we just haven't necessarily touched on them during our career. Not that you're, you would be unable to do them because you've got such a good basis in coding. You just might need someone to help teach you them. And um, in my job now, I don't necessarily use any skills that I have learned in my degree in my master's like I couldn't pinpoint a module that you know that's what I do or that's what I do but it's I, I personally think it's just your mindset you know you can problem solve 
you know, where's the error? Let me check the console. Let me check the input files. Like, you know where you're, you know where to go based on the assignments that you've done before. Um, no problem seems unsolvable. You have a really good basic, uh, you know, coding basis um, of all kind of the infrastructure of coding, how you, you know, phrase your sentences when you're trying to code in those languages. You might not necessarily go into a job where you use Java or C or Python that you've touched on in college, but you'll be able to adapt to those new coding languages so quickly. Um, and I would say problem solving is, the, that's the one that I use the most. Um, you know, uh, even during interviews, they sometimes give you kind of um, aptitude tests. And it's not about getting to the end of the problem, but it's about breaking it down into smaller problems to try and figure out where to go. And I think having done all those assignments that seem just completely unmanageable at the beginning, that then you, you have such a, a great sense of achievement when you finish them. All that learning that you do is, is the most critical part, in my opinion, rather than, you know, one specific module. Brilliant. Yeah, I think I think that's that's great. That I think that's uh, exactly what our attendees need to hear. Um, but I might just go to you just for one final question. Um, just around, obviously, uh, Katie touched on your advice for maybe international students coming over. Uh, but as a student who's currently, you know, studying with us, um, what are some of the supports available to students when they study with us? Or have you found um, that you've been supported in your studies and are the academics friendly and approachable? Uh uh, sorry, can, can, can you repeat the question because there's some sure. internet. Um, do you find the academics that you, that you deal with um, kind of friendly and approachable um, and also some of the supports that have been, um, you've been able to avail of within UCD? Either uh, through peer mentors or the career development team or any kind of supports like well, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for me, because uh, uh, I'm a student, I want to uh, uh, start my job when I finish my master's degree. So I think the most uh, most useful uh, thing is uh, my ca my career of your city, and you know I, I can make appointments with uh, a, a, a a worker from the my career, and she gives uh, gives many uh, useful tips. Uh, for example, you, you must achieve two one results when you finish your um, master's degree, and other other tips maybe like uh, you should. You should use some, uh, you know, the kind kindness words when you, uh, during the interview. You know, some Chinese Chinese students don't don't know how to uh, speak English in uh, kindness ways. For example, a, a, a man when, when when he was in the interview, he always he always said, "I think, I think," and and we we don't know that this word in English is 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 rude, you know. It's true. So you should say I believe or something like this, you know, the interview skill. I think it's it's very useful. Yeah. Great. So the career, yeah, the career development team, I think, is a great resource for students. Um, yeah, they provide CV and resume support and um, mock interviews, that kind of thing. So yeah, I think it's um a really great resource that our students can lean on while they're doing their, their degree and kind of leave UCD with their best foot forward as far as hopefully getting a job um post degree, or even some students get them before they leave, uh, which is great. Um, so I think that's all the questions that we have open at the moment. Uh, my colleague Katie just popped her email address and also my email address in the chat there. So make sure you grab those if you want to reach out to us at a later stage. If you're making an application or you didn't think of a question today and want to ask us later on, reach out to us at any stage. We're more than happy to answer via email or possibly set up a, a Zoom call or a one-to-one -one call if that's necessary as well. Um, but thank you very much to Aoife and to Bate for, for, for joining us for the session today. I think you gave some really great insights into um, what it's like to study at a master's in UCD and also your career journey, Aoife, was really interesting. Um, thank you very much to all our attendees for joining us as well and for listening in and kind of getting involved with the, with the Q&A. Um, as I said at the start, this session is recorded, so um, I know one or two people joined us late, um, so make sure you grab um, a link to our YouTube channel, which my colleague Katie put in the chat as well. You can check out the video there early next week as well. Um, but that's all from us and uh, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>